the year 2000. Prior to being elected to council, Mayor Martinez was appointed a city clerk in 2015. Julio has been a teacher since 1998, currently serving the Beaumont community as a science teacher at America's best comprehensive high school, Beaumont High School. Along with multiple community committees, Mayor Martinez has served on several regional committees, including the Western Riverside Regional Conservation Authority, League of California Cities, and Southern California Association of Governments. It is my honor to present to you the Mayor of Beaumont, Julio Martinez III. Thank you so much, Mr. Silva, for that great introduction. And uh, I just want to give another round of applause to the, all the award winners today. Good morning. Well, no afternoon. Sorry about that. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Beaumont's 2019 State of the City Address. My name is Julio Martinez, Mayor. And we have such a great turnout today. I see our community partners. I see our business leaders, we have members of the community. Thank you all for attending. Now, before I start today, the teacher in me wanted to give you a pop quiz. Now, we're going to ask you a few questions, just three, just to see if we know something about Beaumont. Now, don't worry, we're going to do this as class style. I'm just going to ask you to raise your hand and just blurt out the answer if I call it. Okay? So let's start. How many, of course, know we have a canine named Mila in the Beaumont Police Department? A few of you? Okay, well the question is, how many pounds of drugs has canine Mila found between July of 2018 <laughs> and July of June of 2019? Any guesses? Any guesses? And work off that lunch. Any guesses? A Number of a thousand pounds? Any others? That we're quiet. Okay, well, we're warming up, so let's see. The answer is 2,132.54 pounds. Congratulations. Now, we're the realtors in the room. Realtors. There, Randy there. Come on, Mayor Fortin. You're a realtor. All right, so the question for you is, according to the State of California's Department of Finance, what is Beaumont's exact population? Any guesses? 42, close. 45. 45. 47. 57 for the record. Eight. Wow. Okay. The answer is 48,401. And I know it might feel like more, but we're getting to that later. So. Next question concerns the rebranding of Beaumont. Now you might notice that we have a new logo up there in the corner. So the question for you is, what is Beaumont's new tag? We have a new tag. City elevator. City elevator. Oh, you're cheating. You work for the city. <laughs> a city elevator. Can we all say that? A city yeah. elevator. Well, I don't know, but how many people got all three correct? I don't know about that. Well, don't worry. It's not going on your grade. <laughs> Seriously though, I'm extremely excited to share with you this morning the state of the city, which I am proud to say is overall excellent. We will be discussing Beaumont's economic development, infrastructure, community enrichment, budget, public safety, life elevated, and our community partners. It is my intention to outline the tremendous progress Beaumont has made over the last year while emphasizing areas of considerable achievement. My message today is that Beaumont is constantly being elevated. We as a council are taking the necessary steps to elevate this city by improving the quality of life in our community. If I just look around, I think you would agree that Beaumont is making some positive progress. Sure, we have some traffic problems and infrastructure issues. But that is why it is essential to have the appropriate people in the appropriate places. I want to take a moment and recognize some of our terrific team at City Hall. We have an experienced and forward-thinking city manager sitting at the kids' table here, Mr. Todd Parton. We 
We also have an invaluable asset for the city, the very knowledgeable Assistant City Manager, Christine Day. <laughs> Additionally, we have an exceptionally hardworking staff, an unsurpassed city attorney in Mr. John Pinkney, and a city council that works well together, recognizes the needs of the city, and who all share a very similar vision on how to achieve success for Beaumont. So, let's begin with some introductory words from some Hollywood superstars. Hi, I'm Mayor Paul Ray Santos, and welcome to the 2019 State of the City. Good morning, Beaumont. Welcome to the 2019 State of the City Address. There's a lot of exciting things happening in Beaumont. Glad you're here to be able to uh, listen to everything that's going on. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you, council members. Our first item on the agenda is economic development. Council is working hard to balance residential and economic growth. As many of you know, residential growth in our city correlates to the entitlements put in place by councils of the past. Therefore, present and future councils must ensure that our community is not only meeting the infrastructure needs brought on by growth, but also ensuring there are revenue sources that contribute to the general fund. Let's start with the EDSD. The EDSD is the Economic Development Strategic Plan. On September of 2018, Council awarded a professional service agreement to the Nagelson Dale Group for the preparation of an EDSP. Over nine months, the consultant team has worked closely with staff, especially our economic development manager, Kyle Borsinski, in the back and wave, there you go, Kyle, and a wide range of over 54 community stakeholders to create a comprehensive plan that will systematically strengthen the city's economic development program. Can you raise your hand if you are part of the 54 community stakeholders? I see Ron, I see a few. Excellent. Well, uh, thank you for that time and participation in that process. Last month, the draft was presented to Council and given final approval. Within this plan is a blueprint for attracting new development and business investment, creating jobs and contributing to the city's long-term fiscal health. The vision is that the city strives to create a balanced, sustainable, and diverse economic environment by leveraging existing local businesses, recruiting targeted industries, and encouraging outside investments that will enhance Beaumont's quality of life. Our targeted business themes are the local service businesses, such as retail and restaurants, technology with a focus, such as data centers and scientific consulting services, selected manufacturing, such as food and beverage manufacturing, and healthcare, such as the regional healthcare facilities and continuing care. Now begins the arduous task of implementing the action plan to achieve the goals of the EDSP. We must, must remember that houses bring people, and people do promote our economy. The city's assessed value is 80% residential. Here are some statistics related to our residential growth. Our household income averaged $71,664 in 2017. The median house price is $346,250, and our unemployment rate is at 3.2% as of April, below county, state, and national levels. Now, it's no secret that Beaumont has a fair number of houses, but we already mentioned that we have a current population of 48,401. We have had a 3% annual growth since 2013. The number of housing entitlements is currently at 6,000 units, with an expected total population at build-out estimated to be between 90,000 and 100,000 by the year 2045, an estimated 50% increase. With growth like this, it is essential that we plan now. That is why the EDSP is so important, and our general plan update, which we'll mention later. Some of our new communities, some of our new communities include Olivewood, built by William Lyons Homes, with 981 units located in the west part of town by Petrero Bridge. Additionally, units at Fairway Canyon, home to Nicholas and Palmer Parks, and then additional units at Sundance, built by Pardee, 
and featuring Sundance North and Altus. These additions continue to enhance our community. Now, speaking about Cardi, I'd like to mention two of their products received national recognition. First, the Altus community, shown on the left, was recently named the best age qualified 55 plus active living community at the 2019 Golden Nugget Awards. And Beacon, shown on the right, was the recipient of two Grammy Awards, including Home of the Year and Best Single Detached Home at the 2019 Nugget Awards ceremony. These are from entries throughout the U.S. and international. Congratulations to Party Beaumont is proud to feature your homes. As for Beaumont's commercial and retail growth, with the recent expansion of San Gregorio Village, the addition of the Chevron Slide 10 complex, and our existing center point complex, which includes Best Buy, we are delighted that an additional 500 jobs will be added, as well as an additional $400,000 in revenue to the city's general fund. As you can see, with just a few of our many retail occupants, we are pleased about the diversity that currently exists or soon will exist in the city. A greater diversity will follow as further planning and construction continues with these establishments here. To put into perspective, here's a before and current look at the San Gregorio Village complex. Plans are for total build out of this property by 2020. Now, how many people like going to the movies? Yeah? All right, I know I do. Pack up the kids, we have a minivan, take on down. We've been going 30 miles down to Ontario to watch our movies. And this, this past year, our favorite movie, Endgame, was kind of the, the pinnacle. But wouldn't it be great if we had our own movie theater here, complete with reclining seats and uh, maybe some adult beverages. <laughs> well, I am proud to show a sneak peek at the 12 screen Cinema West Theater, an example of how council and staff are working towards improving our quality of life by listening to our community. When we asked our residents what they wanted in Beaumont, something to do was the loud answer. Most preferred a theater as a source of entertainment, and some wanted the fitness complex as well that could promote health for a growing population. I am pleased that both Cinema West and Planet Fitness will soon fill these requests. In terms of health, we are pleased that the Sundance Corporate Center will house the new Beaver Medical Offices as well as smaller retail pads. We're hoping to elevate the job offerings in our community by attracting professional, career-oriented employment to our area. But one is proud that our city will host this Class A office complex as well as the existing Loma Linda University Medical Facility, which will undoubtedly expand its services. Combined with Weaver, the two will provide a diverse range of medical office offerings and services to residents of Beaumont and the surrounding communities. As for industrial growth, according to our recent 2018 analysis by the Nails and Dale Group, industries within the city employ 9,600 employees. Projected employment by 2035 could add 7,500 additional jobs based on SCAG, the Southern California Association of Governments forecasts. In addition to nationally recognized industries such as Amazon and Wolverine, Bowen is proud to attract international names such as CJ Foods, a major manufacturer and distributor of Asian products with an emphasis on Korean food. CJ intends to expand its production of frozen foods in the Southern California region and would like to make Beaumont a focal point in its sauce and dumpling production. In fact, a funny story, in a recent visit with CJ food officials, they were so excited to bring the dumpling production here in Beaumont, they suggested we change our official seal from the cherry to the dumpling. Now, I told them if we became a major supplier of the country's dumplings, then we can arrange that. But that, of course, needs council approval. <laughs> Here is soon to be open Amazon Distribution Center. In the background, you can see Wolverine, as well as the open area for future industrial development. The design follows our general plan update by concentrating industry to this area of the city. The second item on the agenda is infrastructure. Now, we all know that with growth comes growing pains. However, some of 
the pain can be alleviated with sensible planning concerning infrastructure. Both planning and implementation are necessary to balance growth with the quality of life. Can we say that our civic leaders of the past did a remarkable job in planning? Well, I guess you can see that by sitting in Highland Springs or waiting for the train in Pennsylvania. That is why this council has made infrastructure planning and implementation a priority. For Potrero Bridge, the Potrero Interchange started with the Centennial Memorial Bridge located north of the interchange off Oak Valley Parkway. It was dubbed the Bridge to Nowhere. <laughs> well, I am proud to say that this council has established it as a bridge to somewhere. It now connects our Oak Valley Parkway to the Olivewood community. It will soon connect our new public safety complex, which will house the new Westside Fire Station and the new police station, with a larger portion of our community, such as Tournament Hills, to help enhance our response times. Now, the crown jewel of this project is the Potrero Interchange. A, pro a public private partnership with a budget of over $24 million, Phase 1 is nearing completion and will improve safety conditions in State Route 60 by providing a, an acceleration and deceleration lane for westbound commuters at Western Knowles Avenue. The interchange connects portions of the city that are separated by the 60 freeway. The design for Phase 2 is currently 95% complete. The city has submitted a $20 million bill grant proposal for Phase 2, although full funding has yet to be secured. When complete, however, Phase 2 will allow our commercial and industrial centers, as well as our residents, to connect to the 60 freeway with an interchange complete with eastbound and westbound on and off ramps. In addition, we are pleased that the excellent fiscal management has enabled us to complete the paving from the bridge to 4th Street. Seen here, the bridge and 4th Street we can have a complete pavement now to allow through traffic instead of waiting for Phase 2. Our focus to Pennsylvania, two years ago, the Council awarded the design of Pennsylvania widening project from 1st Street to 6th Street. This includes an at-grade, meaning street-level, railroad crossing. After several modifications from the Union Pacific Railroad and further environmental technical studies, the design is now 95% complete. Overall, the entire project has three main goals. Pennsylvania Avenue widening, on and off ramps both east and westbound, and a railroad grade separation which will elevate the tracks over Pennsylvania to eliminate wait time and ease congestion. It is our vision that this can also promote further commercial development along Pennsylvania Avenue south of the freeway. This conceptual drawing here shows the widening street with the railroad elevation and the I-10 in the back. Now, probably the most frustrating, <laughs> and that, that's probably an understatement, but probably the most frustrating issue concerning roadway infrastructure, not only for Beaumont residents, but Banyan residents as well. A crossroad for commercial, emergency, and residential traffic Improving Highland Springs and the interchange is a complicated and intricate issue. A project that involves Caltrans, the Riverside County Transportation Commission, the cities of Bannon and Beaumont. Funding and design of the interchange project, as well as communication among the agencies mentioned, presents extraordinary challenges. I am pleased to announce, however, that steps are being taken to begin the lengthy and costly process of addressing and ultimately modifying this current situation. Beaumont and Banning have conducted the first committee meeting, which consisted of the mayors from both cities, the city managers, as well as the public works directors. We discussed key elements of the situation and have agreed that the Riverside County Transportation Commission, known as RCTC, should be the lead agency on the project. RCTC agreed. Further meetings involving RCTC now move forward to the planning phase. Further in the discussion of infrastructure, road conditions in the city can also be addressed. Here we see pavement management map that identifies portions of the city that will soon be receiving maintenance. From the citywide basic slurry seal that will help extend the life of the streets for five to seven years, seen throughout the city in green, to more intensive rehabilitation, such as the Beaumont Avenue reconstruction project, seen here in red, to the restoration of our alleyways depicted 
here in blue, right now concentrated around the post office area. These repairs are made possible due to the gas tax SB1 fund, Measure A funds, and developed impact fees known as DIF. Additionally, Council is concerned about the growing number of potholes in the city. Therefore, the city has entered into a lease purchase agreement for a $200,000 hot patch delivery vehicle that you saw earlier on the slide. The vehicle will allow for better, more permanent patch, which will increase the longevity of the repair. The last topic of infrastructure concerns the city's wastewater treatment plant, expansion renovation, and brine pipeline installation project, both of which are currently under construction. At a total cost of approximately $107 million, these projects will significantly increase capacity for treatment to six MGD, or millions of gallons per day. This will allow the city to remain in legal compliance with discharge requirements, as well as handle the increasing needs of our residential, commercial, and industrial growth for the next 10 to 15 years. The plant's treatment capacity can be expanded to 8 MGD, which can further extend its capability. In addition, the city will also be able to produce Title I recycled water to meet the needs of our community, as well as surrounding communities, in cooperation with the Beaumont Cherry Valley Water District for its delivery. Producing Title I water has long been anticipated and will finally come to realization as a result of the efforts of our current city council. As for the Bryant Pipeline, which carries a super concentrated salt water waste from the treatment plant to the main delivery pipeline all the way to San Bernardino, it is now 63% complete and currently travels over 13 miles. At completion, it will travel 23 miles from Beaumont to San Bernardino. The third item on the agenda is our <coughs> community enrichment. The category involves those of community enrichment by improving our quality of life. We will look at areas concerning military residents and their families, transit, facility upgrades and enhancement, as well as our vision for the future Beaumont through the draft general plan. Now, how many of you here are Beaumont residents with an immediate family member in the active military? Anyone? Okay. We have a program for you. The city has launched our military appreciation program. There are currently 25 banners displayed on Beaumont Avenue and Oak Valley Parkway. We also plan to expand and place banners on First Street. The banner program is open to the active military personnel or Beaumont residents or who are immediate family members of Beaumont residents. In addition, we can see the Liberty Village. Beaumont is proud of this 38 unit complex for our local income veterans. In regards to transit, I'm pleased to tell you that Beaumont Transit is expanding its focus to regional service. With service to and from Metrolink in San Bernardino, Commuters can take advantage of Metrolink service to Disneyland, local beaches on the beach stream, and LA Union Station via our Commuter Link 120 comfortable and state-of-the-art bus. It also takes commuters to the Redlands Mountain Grove and Citrus Plaza as well, and also to Kaiser and Veterans Hospital. We have real-time bus tracking available on our mobile app. Saw by our table, we have flyers in the back. Been trying to get Mayor uh, Pro Tem Santos to take the bus to LA meeting, but he won't do it. So, anyway, we're encouraging. <laughs> Looking at our facility upgrade enhancement, the city recently purchased a 6.1 acre property adjacent to our wastewater treatment plant. We are proud of the plans for this public compressed natural gas or CNG refueling station are in progress and will allow city vehicles to refuel locally. This property will also house future city yard, including transit, which allow us to continue our plans to redesign City Hall and develop the new City Hall Plaza you'll see shortly. Furthermore, Beaumont has a variety of beautiful community parks. In the spirit of improving the quality of life, we strive to ensure that our parks are meeting the needs of the community. The sports park located on Beaumont Avenue by the high school needs field lights on the north end and a more energy efficient lighting system overall. We also intend to improve the field conditions as well as expand the soccer use of the field. As for Nicholas Park, a multi-purpose, multi-athletic concept would allow a more diverse offering of the park's acreage. The city is also looking into the Forge Park with possible plans to meet the changing needs of our community. To mention Rangel Park, Rangel Park here is a truly residential encouraged renovation. 
After listening to the community's needs and wants, the city decided it was time to renovate. Rangel Park will have an updated seating and landscaping as well as new fencing. We will add to the excitement of the park, playground, basketball court, and even a splash pad to provide a refreshing design for the multi-purpose use. One of our community favorites, the plunge, has been upgraded with new paint, flooring, patio furniture, and signage, and an enhanced training program for lifeguards will contribute to the overall safety as well. Now a few minutes here for the general plan. I mentioned earlier that the city is looking at 100,000 possible residents. Having a plan in place to deal with this type of growth is of utmost importance. This plan, called the General Plan, is a policy document that serves as the city's blueprint for future development and decision making. Beaumont is currently in the process of updating this General Plan. The current plan was adopted in 2007 and no longer meets our ever-changing needs. Therefore, Council hired Raymond Associates to develop the updated plan, which should be completed in draft form by October of 2019. This updated plan will serve as our long guide, long range guide for addressing land use, circulation, housing, safety, noise, conservation, and open space. Alan K. once said, the best way to predict the future is to invent it. Our general plan update called the Beaumont 2040 plan is a comprehensive plan that identifies our major strategies and physical improvements to the city over the next 20 to 30 years. These strategies include the revitalizing of 6th Street into a downtown, as you'll see shortly, transforming Beaumont Avenue and 6th Street into mixed-use corridors, expanding jobs, and expanding housing choices in the city with new affordable and market-rate single-family houses and multifamily housing. To achieve this direction, the city will need to ensure that the history and identity of the community is preserved. Let's take a look here at the uh, map. So we have a breakdown of the uh, designation plan map. We have here light green, which is our open space. We have our dark green here for recreational use. As we look at the dark blue here for industries here and here, we have a purple designation representing urban village, which is a possible high density residential. And the red represents uh, general commercial and the pink you can kind of see down here is downtown mixed use which are two or three story buildings which have the first floor with retail and the uh, upper floor with either multifamily residential or uh, professional office space. Now for affordable housing. The last topic of infrastructure. Affordable housing is very very important with continuing mandates by the state and a topic that must be addressed sooner than later, the city has incorporated its high-density residential development and multifamily <coughs> residential uses in its land use designation mentioned on the previous slide. After the general plan update is adopted next year, the city will begin specific work on the housing element of the plan, which will further address the affordable housing issues. The fourth item on the agenda brings us to numbers. We're going to look here real quickly at the budget overview, revenues, expenses, our wastewater bond rating, and some grants that we recently received. So fiscally, I am proud to say that Beaumont is fully balanced. Let me repeat that. Beaumont is fully balanced. With an approximate $32 million budget for the general fund, expenses match revenues, while establishing reserves at 15%. This is essential as we plan for an economic turndown, but also as we plan our multi-year forecasts to build around the goal of fiscal sustainability. So let's look at ensuring sustainability. The multi-year forecast of the general fund compares revenues to expenses through the fiscal year 2036. Our fiscal vision is simply sustainability over time. As you can see from the graph, there will be some periods where revenues dip under expenses, but then there will be periods where we see revenues outpace expenses. This is why building reserves for lean times and maintaining appropriate spending curves is essential to achieve sustainability. 
of course, like any practical model, continually updating that model to match the growing trend is essential. This graph depicts our revenue sources for the general fund. As observed, 50% of our general fund revenue comes from a combination of property assessment and sales tax. As mentioned earlier, housing brings people and people drive the economy. The third graph here illustrates general fund expenses. As noted, 50% of our city general fund expenses are allocated to public safety. However, an allocation of only 6% for street maintenance is a concern for council and one that we would like to address in the near future. As for the wastewater fund revenue, we can see that the majority of our funding comes from the sewer capacity fees at 78%, with 80% of the total revenue allocated to operating and capital expenses. In addition, personnel costs are at 17% of total expenses, including the recently hired plant operator. With the addition of the operator and staff, we have brought management and operations in-house and no longer outsourcing for these functions. As for bond ratings, bond ratings are assigned by the Standard & Poor's S&P Global. I am proud that the wastewater revenue bond received an S&P long-term rating of A plus stable. The rationale for this rating is based in part to the areas known to on the slides, including the implementation of our Prop 218 rate increases. Furthermore, it is very possible that a three to five year renewal could result in a double A rate. Included on this slide is the emphasis of alternate funding sources from grants. With over $750,000 secured, staff continues to do its due diligence to find alternative sources for funding facilities, programs, and equipment. Additional grants not included here are federal highway grants and the additional application of the bill grant. That brings us to our fifth category today, public safety. The City of Beaumont is fortunate to have outstanding, professional, and well-trained personnel in both the Beaumont Police Department and in CAL FIRE. It is imperative that they have the resources they need to do their jobs effectively. These two agencies strive to keep our community safe and put themselves in harm's way every day. As we continue to talk of public safety, Let's take a look at some resources. Upgraded software in our public, in our police department will help to increase efficiency by reducing overtime spending and enhancing daily operations. Both cameras, body cameras being worn by patrol officers will enhance transparency with the public and promote public confidence. Our task force called the Multi-Enforcement Team or MET is an invaluable asset and has established a reputation as a high caliber crime reduction unit in our area. Here, of course, is our canine with a breakdown of the drug seized. I wanted to take this time to let you know that that number there is not all Beaumont. The uh, Mila has been utilized by the CHP <laughs> and the Department of Homeland Security, so maybe a little ambiguous there, but I had to clarify that. <laughs> our unmanned aerial vehicle, or UAV, has proven, proven to be a very effective goal for its original intention of search and rescue. During the February floods, the Sheriff's Department commended the Beaumont Police Department for its efforts in locating a stranded vehicle caught in the floods and was instrumental in finding a missing elderly woman in 4th Street. Now I mentioned about a topic of homes. The situation of homelessness has reached epidemic proportions throughout our state. It's a problem I believe that no single city can fix alone. I believe, however, we should look at it in two ways. The first addresses the homeless individuals by offering to locate support services. The latest point in time homeless count for the city is 15. On this slide, we can see the services offered by the Riverside County DPSS. You should note that our officers have made every effort and are continuing to make every effort to offer the homeless in our city the options listed. However, we have to remember that the homeless have a right to be homeless, and the law makes many allowances for this. Therefore, the city must continue to identify those that choose their lifestyle and those that choose to be helped. The second addresses the needs of our community by focusing on safety and health. 
I believe we have a right as a community to a clean and safe environment. As seen in the slide, an abandoned encampment is neither clean nor safe. Be assured that we as a city are addressing our community concerns <laughs> as they arise. I am thankful to say that the City Council has recently approved the position of the Business Liaison Officer that will address homeless concerns and will bridge the concerns from the community to the businesses with the rights of the homelessness while promoting safety and health in our community. I continue with many awards bestowed upon the Beaumont Police Department. From recognition by County Law Enforcement Appreciation Committees to our local department awards, Beaumont PD continues to excel due to the efforts and contributions of our personnel and, of course, the fine leadership of Chief Police and Deputy Chief Onadero. Our police annex scene here, or Emergency Operations Center, EOC, located in the east end of town, will house police and public safety personnel to have a greater outreach into the community, including the soon-to-be-filled business liaison officer. It will establish the foundation of our EOC and eventually will act as a substation with public services. Here are some police and dispatch activity stats. I want to point out that the patrol received over 44,000 calls for service and the dispatch processed over 8,000 calls for 2018, 10,000 being 911 calls. Handling this type of volume in our city can be accomplished only by having extremely competent and dedicated individuals. Focusing on the men and women of Cal Fire, the City of Beaumont, in addition to its contract for city services, also has entered into a contract for wildland agreement. This agreement protects the city's interest of the fire rooks in the wildland areas of the city or our areas of influence. Without this agreement, the city would be liable for firefighting costs associated with the fire. For example, the Manzanita fire was estimated to cost over $2 million. The agreement at a cost of $43,000 a year is a prudent protect, protect, uh, protection and is fiscally responsible for the city. Council recently also approved of the budget in addition of a paramedic squad. Our intention is to add additional personnel and an engine to complete a full engine squad. The overall goal is